So in this video, we're going to take a look at object destructuring. So essentially, the syntax is almost the same as arrays, but instead of using square brackets, we use curly brackets. And then we simply have to say equals and then from the object that we want to destructure. So let me go ahead and show you this in code as well. So let me simply create a function that simply will hold all of this for now. So erase and then that's equals to a function and then that's equals to another function. And I'll simply put all of this in here, just like so. So essentially, let's say that we have a response from our API that simply contains some response data and some data in it. So I'm going to say const and then response equals to an object. And then this object has status code. And let's say that this is a 200. And then we have data. And we we have let's say we have a you know a, a person object inside of that. So we may have a name and let's say this is John and let's say that we have address and then within address we have city let's say um, London and then country and let's say England. So now I can actually destructure this object by simply saying const. And then within this um, curly braces, I can pretty much just say whatever I want to pull out from this um, object. So let's say I want status code. So status code. And then I can say equals and then response. So I want to get status code from response, right? So this status code corresponds to this one here. So if I now log status code, you'll see that we have 200. So I can also rename this status code. So remember that this variable is the same, has to be the same as this one. But let's say that I change my mind and I want to rename this to only code, right? So instead of, or even response code, let's say we want response code. So I can pretty much just do a column and then rename this to response code, just like so. Now, if I change this to response code, you'll see that this works the same. So just let me change now to 404. You'll see that we have 404, right? So we can also uh, destructure nested um, objects. So for example, if I also uh, want to get, you know, let's say a person's name. So all I have to do is simply say, I want to go into data. So this data here, so this corresponds to this. And then because this is, this is an object, so I have to put that and then an object. And then within that, I have person, right? And then person is also an object. And then within person, I, I need name, just just like that, right? So just let me put this a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. So if I now save this, you'll see that we have no errors. But now I've got name that I can actually print. So if I say log and then name, you'll see that we have John. So if I want to change this to, you know, instead of name, I want this to be person's name. Okay, I can say actually, I can just say John, right? So this is John. And I will simply print John here. Just like so. So if I save this, you'll see that we have the same thing. So also what we can do, so let's say that um, you know, this, um, you know, could come from, you know, method, let's have a, a function that simply uh, get um, person from DB, 
let's say, and this is a, an arrow function that simply returns. Um, so this will return the response. So return response. So, you know, we can also call the method. So we can say get person from DB and execute this and save this. And you'll see that the same applies. So what we can also do is let's say that I copy this and let's say that the response now is an array of objects, right? So let's say that we, we have multiple responses. So if I simply copy this, right? I actually cut this and then put this inside of an array, just like so. And if I paste this and then just let me duplicate this. So we have you know, two responses, one 200, and this is um, Malik and city Lisbon and country Portugal, just like so, Portugal. And let's say that we have another one. And this is from, let's say Milan. And this is Alex. And then this is Italy. So if I want to loop through this uh, response, right, which is an array, I can actually also destructure this by using a loop. So what I would need to do is simply say for, and then I have to say const, and then this would be whatever I want to destructure. So this pretty much is this baby here. So let me just copy this and just put it inside. And then I have to say of, and then get students from DB. Actually, this is now get, get persons, right? So get persons, and this is get persons from DB. So now I need to open and close curly braces and simply log the same information right here. And I just realized that I have two consts and instead of one, and let me simply log, um, you know, some, some lines just like that. And now if I save this, we should have the same thing. So as you can see, we just, you know, looping through the object and destructuring at the same time. So you can see it's really cool, really beautiful. Uh, let's say that we have 301 here. Uh, you can see that this is really beautiful code. Um, so essentially what we're just doing is simply creating a const as we did before, and then saying that we want to get status code and rename that to response code, and then data, and then we want to go into person. So this data, and then person, and then we want to get name, and then we want to rename that to John. But so in this case, it's not John actually, it has to be name and here name, just like that. And then we say of, and then get persons from DB. So this returns an array. So that's why we just looping through that. So one more thing that we can actually do with, um, you know, destructuring objects is that let's say that we have a method. So const, and then save to db equals to a function. And let's say that this function takes name and then a callback, um, callback, and this is an arrow function, just like so. And then let me say, let me simply say log and then name, and then let's say callback, just like that, execute the callback. So if I say save to DB and then pass uh, Maria, Maria, and then the callback can be, you know, an inner function or actually a an arrow function. And then I can simply say log and then saving to DB completed, 
just let you just let say that now if I save this so if I scroll to the bottom you'll see that we have saving to DB com completed so let's say now that uh, we want to introduce a new variable right into the function and let's simply say that this is let's say ID for example right so if I now run my code, right, you'll see that we have an error. And that's because callback is not a function. So as you can see now, we've messed up the order of the callback. So now I have to know exactly where to place the ID in order for my callback to be executed. So now I need to add the ID right here. So this is two, and then this should work fine. So now if I, let's say we add, I don't know, let's say that we add uh, time here, right? And then now I need to know, okay, so where this time goes? So gosh, so if I save this, uh, you know, code still works fine. But if I change this time just before the callback, you'll see that the code will break because callback is not a function. So to fix this issue, what we can do is simply destructure this as well. So I can simply replace this whole thing with this. So just let me comment this out for now. So now I can say, okay, this is a, an object and we, we will pass name and then ID, time and callback. So now what I need to do in my function, right, is simply just let me remove this so you can see properly what's going on. So it simply say that I'm going to pass a name and then this is Maria and then I will pass the ID which is two and then let's say that I don't pass any time for now and then I say callback and then I can say that this is a function so it's a function and then this function I will simply log and then um, saving to DB completed, right? So if I save this, you'll see that this just works fine. And you know, the order of my parameters is not even, um, you know, it's not, it's not becoming now an issue, right? So if I now, let's say I want to change callback, you know, to be my first parameter, you know, this just works fine because it knows where to get callback from. So as you can see, you know, this is like super awesome. Uh, ESX gives us, you know, so much cool stuff, uh, you know, with, with this um, object destructuring and array destructuring as well. So please, you know, just start using these because, uh, you know, they, they are really cool. And I'm really, really sure that you will benefit from these. So please join me in the next video. See ya.